Formula One is meant to be the pinnacle of So it's meant to be the fastest, the best, the best uh, everything. Best drivers, best everything. So today let's compare Formula One lap times to other racing series and categories to see where it all stacks up and make it all visually nice and pleasing to look at. Before we even start, in the comments, put down your thoughts. Which other racing series is going to be near Form or the closest to Formula One lap times or even faster? Put it down in the comments, I'll be interested, and whilst you're down there, subscribe and like, I don't know why you wouldn't, because trust me, I have some crazy ideas for this channel in the next couple years, you don't want to miss it, so just join me, come along. We're going to be using Silverstone as our benchmark track, as pretty much everything races there, it's just a good track, a lot of fast speed corners, low speed corners, good straights, everything can be used to our advantage to see what's actually fast. And we're also going to be comparing quality times to actual race times, like the averages. So it's not going to be the fastest lap ever of Formula One in Silverstone and the fastest. It's not going to be. It's just going to be averages, averages. Okay, so it's it's nice and even. So you don't have fucking like a Max Verstappen versus a Mick Schumacher lap times. Big difference. We average them out, make it nice and even. In all of this, we're going to cover F1 cars, F2, F3, F4, GT3, GT4, MotoGP, LMP1, LMP2, LMGTE. Pro, Miata cars, IndyCar, and Formula E car. So, I guess we should probably kick start off with Formula 1. Set a benchmark for all of the other lap times to see how they stack up against it. A typical Formula 1 car these days is around 1,000 horsepower and weighs around 800 kilograms. Of course, built primarily or just solely on aerodynamics. And hopefully, if you're not Alonso, you have a GP1 engine or a Formula 1, not a GP2 engine like Fernando Alonso had. So, you know, it's pretty nifty on the straights as well. But the whole concept of Formula 1 is turning, having fast tur- being good under turning. That's, that's what it is. A decent lap around Silverstone in qualifying is around a 127.5. Yeah, that's just our benchmark. There's not anything to compare it to. And well in the race, a 131 something, 0.3, something around there. Decent lap time. Yet again, these are all averaged out because obviously you have different tire compounds, soft, hards, old hards, heavy fuel, softs, low fuel. It's just average it out. 131 around there. It's a, it's a good time for Formula One in, in the race, that is. In quali, you'll be fucking booted off faster than Lance Stroll can. <laughs> On to the first junior category, Formula Two, also built basically for cornering speeds, but it's a bit slower than Formula 1 because it's a junior category. It's not meant to be as fast as Formula 1. Around the grid, they all use the same engine, so the straight line speed is pretty much all the same unless you're running different wings. Then it's obviously going to vary. The cars have around 620 horsepower and weigh just under 800 kilograms, including the driver. A decent quality time for a Formula 2 car or driver is a 140 around something like that, around Silverstone. Pretty decent time. Obviously won't get you polled, but it won't put you P20. Just an average time. It's a good time. And in the race, three or so seconds slower, a 143.5. Decent, decent race time. So around Silverstone, it's uh, it's a fair ways off. Even just Formula 1 to Formula 2. It's a pretty big difference. Formula 3 up next, then this is a junior, junior category to Formula 2. And a lot of drivers will, unless you're Kimi Antonelli, you, 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 you go to the category. Unless you're Kimi Antonelli, you skip it. Also built for aerodynamics and cornering speed. That's the main goal. But yet again, engines are the same, straight line speeders, all, pre all pretty similar. The cars have 380 horsepower and weigh just under 700 kilograms. And that makes them pretty nippy in corners. A decent quality time in Formula 3 is around 146, flat. And in the race, the 148.3, decent, not too far off F2, but still, you, you see the gap going down. And that obviously is going to put it P3 on all the fastest racing categories. No surprise that next up we have Formula 4. And you might have guessed it, it's, it's, it's going to be fourth on the list so far. It might change sooner or later. Also a junior, junior, junior category for even younger drivers to race in, with just under 200 horsepower and weighs around 570 kilograms, also makes it quite nippy, but lap times are obviously going to be slower than Formula 1, Formula 2 and Formula 3. Breaking into the two minutes, a good quality time is around a 2 minute 02, and a decent race time isn't too far off that, around a 203.7 something something. Pretty decent, and that obviously is going to put it P4, knowing that for F234, just keep on getting slower. But soon this will change. 
Taking a slight break from open wheelers, we're going to talk about GT3 cars next, around 500 horsepower and weigh around 1200 kilograms. Built obviously to be absolute tanks in races and to absorb some hits, unlike Formula 1 front wings which some drivers break on a daily basis. It's got, well, a decent amount of aero for the car that it is, and it also has some decent power to put it in a straight line at a decent pace. A fair quality time is around 2 minutes 3 seconds and 3 tenths, and in the race, 2 minutes 6 seconds and 7 tenths won't put you as bad or good or just deal. You'll be, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. Pretty decent for what the car is, and they're, yeah, they're beautiful, especially the BMW GT3, the M4, the G82. That thing is so beautiful. Next up, GT4 cars, also built pretty similar to GT3, but obviously with less aero and a bit less power. 420 around their horsepower to be exact, and weighs around 1,500 kilograms. It's a, it's a bit of a boat, but still faster than your car, most probably. In quali, if you set around a 2 minute 10, you'll be fine, and in the race, a 2 minute 12, yeah, you'll, you'll also be chilling. Pretty, like... That's already a second slower than Formula 1, like... And that puts it sixth on our list. You know, I've just come to the realization that everything that I've said has been literally in order from fastest to slowest, but it changes now. Because we're gonna talk about MotoGP. Not a car, it's a bike. With around 260 horsepower and a weight of around 160 kilograms, it's nippy, like, it's very nippy. It might not have the best getaways due to the small tire area for it to... But after the, the initial, like, couple second getaway, it wraps up the, like, oh my god, it's fast. Pretty difficult in the corners because of the lack of rubber and lack of mechanical grip. Also, there isn't really many aerodynamic things on the bike. But with that said, we're back into the one minute. A decent quality time is around 158.5. Well, it's a decent time, you know what? If you set that time, fair play, good time. And a decent race time lap is around a 2 minute 02. And now this can slot up to P4, faster than Formula 3, but still a bit slower than Formula 4. Next up, we have the whole WEC Championship. So LMP1, aka Hypercar, LMP2, and GTE Pro, and Amateur. But we're going to ignore Amateur because it's the same as the Pro, but just worse drivers. So, kickstarting off with LMP1, or Hypercar, powered by four wheels. Yeah, four-wheel drive, hybrid system, it's all pretty cool. Around 670 horsepower and weighs around 130 kilograms. The whole WEC championship raced around Silverstone in 2019, so take this with a pinch of salt because it was a bit ago. But a decent quality lap time was around a 136.7, something like that. And a decent race time was 1 minute 40 or somewhere in the 40s. Pretty, pretty decent lap times, but still a fair ways off Formula 1. I might be saying a fair ways off Formula 1, but not really because it's only, well, literally a couple seconds, and that slots LMP1, or Hypercar, into P2 as the second fastest, uh, car? Yeah? Car? Car? Uh, well, so far. Shoots up above Formula 2, Formula 3, all of them lot. You know what? I actually can give F1 a run for its money. A couple years ago, an LMP1 car, a Hypercar, I think the Porsche, was faster around Spa, than a Formula 1 car, which was kind of crazy, but it happened. Next up, it's baby brother, the LMP2. It weighs around 900 kilograms and has around 560 horsepower. Now, of course, it's, it's pretty much the LMP1, but just slower. Same with Formula 1 and Formula 2. Same thing, but just slower and a bit worse. Reminds me of the whole Red Bull pair. Verstappen at the top, the LMP1, and then you got Perez, just worse, slower, and worse, the LMP2. It's baby brother. Pretty similar, right? Anyway, a decent quality time in an LMP2 is around a 141.6, and a decent race time of a 144.7. Now that brings it up to P4, faster than Formula 3, but a bit, a tiny, just a second or so slower than Formula 2. Which honestly, I kind of didn't expect. I thought that Formula 3 was going to be a bit faster. And rounding off the whole WEC championship, we have none other than the GTE Pro. Pretty similar to the whole GT3 car, but it's got a bit less aero, but it's a, it's a bit more beefier, a bit more faster, a bit more aggressive. The GTE cars are more finely developed than the GT3 cars, making them a bit better, but it has around 550 horsepower and it weighs around 1,250 kilograms, including the driver. 
a decent quality time of around a 155.3 and a decent race time of a 156.4 or something like that. And this slots it up into P6, just slower than the Formula 3 cars, but faster than the Formula 4. And there's like an ongoing thing, Formula 1, Formula 2, Formula 3, and then slightly behind that, you know, slotting in between the two gaps or all of the gap, the WEC cars. And honestly, I might start watching WEC. It looks very entertaining. And now to say it doesn't get a tiny bit dicey here, let's talk about the Miatas. Yeah, Miatas race around Silverstone. Obviously, the Miata isn't built for racing. It's a convertible when it was enjoyed for Sunday Night Drive with around 100 horsepower. But it really didn't it kind of changed because this whole race car category it weighs around 800 kilograms and has around 275 horsepower pretty decent for the little bugger that it is it's quite unstable as it's a convertible and it misses some structural things around the corners it can be a bit bendy if you don't have some good sway bars under you and obviously some good bc racing suspension a decent quality lap time is around 2 minutes 34.4 which is like a second slower than Formula 1, like a lot slower than Formula 1. And a decent race time lap of around 2 minutes 36.3. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot slower than Formula 1, and I can see why, because 1 is, a, is an absolute shitbox, and 1, well, uh, if you're in the Red Bull, then it's a dream to drive. Uh, but if you're in the Haas, then it's kind of a shitbox as well. And I said this is where it gets dicey, but I genuinely mean it gets dicey, like, right now. Because IndyCar has never raced at Silverstone. It's an American series, it will probably never race at Silverstone. But in 2019, they did race at Cota, and in 2019, guess what? F1, they also raced at Cota. So if we use some, some good math skills, I'm pretty, pretty nifty at maths, we can try work out the percentage difference from the 2019 IndyCar quality time to the F1 quality time, the percentage difference, we can try and work that out. And that is around 15.22%. And therefore, to the Formula 1 time of 2023, a decent quality time, we can times that by 1.1522, and that equals to around a 1 minute 40.7. <sighs> if IndyCar did that lap time around Silverstone, they'll bring in a pretty good lap time around Silverstone. Would it be too far away from F1? Uh, no, not, not entirely. It would make it the fourth fastest car, just slower than Formula 2, just slower than LMP1, but a tiny bit faster than LMP2. So America, stop, stop whining, your, your racing isn't the fastest. F1, F2, and LMP1, or hypercar, is still faster. I said it was gonna get dicey, and it did get dicey, like, like very dicey, but it gets even more dicier, because we're gonna talk about Formula E now. Now, Formula E, the cars are really built for going s around slow, nimble tracks. They don't really have any good straight line speed. They're just built for slow corners and twisty sections. And, well, they do race at Monaco, and so does Formula 1, all hippity-happity. But then at the same time, Monaco is literally basically built for Formula E. Slow corners, it's Formula E's bread and butter. So with that said, we can do our usual calculations. A Formula 1 time around Monaco was around a 111.8, and a Formula E time a 130.5. Calculate the difference, it's around a 25.8% difference, Formula E being slower, of course. So if we times that by the 1, 27 something of the Silverstone time. So then if we take the 127.6, the F1 Silverstone time, times it by 1.2587, we get a lap time of 150.246. It, it gets it gets a little tricky because knowing that Formula E is literally built for Monaco and the whole Monaco circuit, it's built for it. But Silverstone obviously has some fast speed corners, which Formula E won't be good at, and a shit ton of straights. Formula E won't also be good at that. So let's be real. Let's shave off around five, seven seconds of the time. And that's a more representative uh, lap time that Formula E might have made around Silverstone. Let's say five, let's say seven seconds. That makes it a 157.2 something, something, something. And that then makes it the eighth fastest car, just slower than the GTE Pros, but slightly faster than the F4 car. And I guess that's literally everything. Literally all, all the main categories and Miata just, just for the fun of it. Let me know what you thought about this video down in the comments. Do you, what do you, should, what do you think? Why well, should they like and subscribe? Really hope you enjoyed and have a safe and fantastic rest of your day. Peace.